Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in for this 2020 Ford Explorer night review and test drive. So I'm going to show you all the detailed features of these exterior lights, interior lights, cargo lights, and then we're going to go for a drive and see how well they perform. Be sure to check out my daytime review if you want to see even more information. So we have the platinum trim right here. We have some really nice LED lights up front, LED fog lights. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at these lights. So right up above, you've got the LED daytime running light that runs across that headlight. And it really looks nice during the daytime as well. It gives it a pretty nice presence. It kind of sits real high, so it gives it a little bit of a beefier look. And I really like the way it looks. On that side, you'll see the marker light right underneath Explorer, which is pretty cool. And then every single model is gonna give you LED high and low beams, but our platinum trim gives us projector housing and you can see the LED high beams on the inside. Then you've got that LED turn signal and we have LED fog lights right down below and it's kind of a really unique design for that fog light, that horizontal design. I think it looks pretty cool and it kind of fits the horizontal design of the upper headlights. Now, even though the other trims other than the platinum get a different housing style for the LED lights, they all get the same acceptable grade from the IIHS. So not the highest good grade, but acceptable. As we come around to the side, this is the iconic silver. It looks pretty nice. The light shines off of it pretty well. It looks pretty clean. It's a nice clean looking silver. You've got the turn signal in the mirror, which is always good to see as well. And then as we move over to the back, we do have some LED elements here. Now the red here is LED. You've got that LED running around that incandescent turn signal and then the reverse light is also incandescent. So you've got the red stop light, regular tail light, parking light, that's LED. And then it looks like we have just regular incandescent uh, license plate lights below that. Now as we take a look at the cargo area, for dark situations, your lock and tailgate function uh, your power functions are illuminated and then looking back here you do have some light that shines in here it is definitely brighter in person than it is on the camera and you can see that nice bright light on that right side there it does light up this area pretty well more so than what it looks like on here sorry about the focus one thing i'd like to maybe see is a light up there but that's asking quite a bit overall it's a spacious area and it's still pretty well lit now taking a look in the back seat, the handle's not illuminated or anything special like that. And I'll show you a little bit more um, on the inside in a second. But we've got LED lighting, ambient lighting, on the inside of the door and the bottle holder area. It's red when the door is open as kind of a safety function, but it looks pretty cool as well. And then the rest of this interior is pretty well lit. You've got LED lights on each side right up above there. And that lights this area up pretty well. Let's go ahead and hop in. The third row gets one overhead light and that overhead light can kind of help with the cargo area as well. Now the back seat still has illumination right here. You can see this ambient lighting there, ambient lighting in the door and the window switch as well. Passengers also in the back get their climate controls illuminated for easy access there. There are charging ports below the climate controls but you can't see them, they're not illuminated. Now as we come into the front door, we do get a nice bright light, a little puddle light under that mirror to shine down on the ground. You get the same kind of red lighting when the doors open on the driver's side. I'll show you the actual lighting in a second. And then our trim, this platinum trim, gives us the Explorer scuff plate illuminated, which looks pretty nice. And this interior is still pretty well lit. The LED beams are kind of narrow. It's not a real broad light on the inside, but it lights everything up pretty well. Now let's take a look at the interior when it's not super dark. I'll show you what it's like when it's really dark in just a second. So push button start, you get a light right there. And then our startup screen here. Now over on the doors, I'll show you the different ambient lighting colors, but check that out. Even in the door handle, you can get some lighting in there and there's actually a decent amount. Your memory setting lights are even lit up. Everything, all the switches, mirrors, windows, everything is illuminated there as well. And then even down in the door pocket, you can faintly see that you do have some lighting there as well. All of the actual lighting controls and your lift gate function are right here. You can adjust your interior brightness right here. Have your headlights automatic, have them on, parking lights off, and your fog lights. The steering wheel is also well illuminated. There are a lot of buttons here. Uh, that's my only complaint really. On the left side, you can clearly see everything here, your volume, your cruise control. 
Right side, you've got menu settings for your information display and voice controls, as well as changing the station on the radio. Even the paddle shifters, here you've got your downshift and your upshift, those are illuminated as well. One thing that's not are these stocks, but I don't really expect them to be illuminated. Now in front of us, I'll show you more of this in my full daytime review, uh, but you've got a couple different settings here, or a couple different views, I guess you could say. It is pretty large. You've got information on that right side, your speedometer in the middle, tachometer on the left. And then as we move across, we've got our large portrait style screen. The start button is illuminated, and it's just a kind of an interesting look looking at this. But as you can see, all these buttons are also well illuminated. So on the screen, there's a lot that you can control. It's kind of a split screen, like when you get Apple CarPlay going. And I'll show you in the full review, you've got that on the top uh, and, and the kind of the information on the bottom. Um, it's a really useful screen. There's a lot that you can do on here. Um, there's a lot of different settings that you can change. I'll go through the driver assistance features in another video. Uh, the different ambient light colors. These are the different colors. And wow, my camera is kind of showing this is yellow in this, but we actually have like an ice blue, orange, regular blue, red, green, and then kind of a darker blue. And then we have like this purpley color here at the bottom. And you can adjust how bright the ambient lighting is with that. But we'll cycle through those in a second. Your radio controls are illuminated right here. Your um, air conditioning controls are also illuminated. Everything is really clear and easy to see. So that is much appreciated. This little storage bin right here has some nice lighting. There's a big light right back here that illuminates all your stuff, even backlighting for your charging ports. The shifter has nice lighting. All the buttons behind it have some nice backlighting. It's a really nice calm backlighting. It's kind of like a sea green type of lighting. And then even these bottle holders, the, they have these illuminated rings. My only thing is I would question what the durability is if you have like condensation running down, but still it looks really nice. And you probably can't really see it. Hopefully you can kind of see it on my shoes, but there is lighting on both driver and passenger footwells. There's still some ambient lighting in that door handle there as well, and the passenger gets their illuminated window button. Now the glove box does have a, a decent light. It's kind of a dim light, but it works. And then one thing that I really like and appreciate, even if we don't have the ambient lighting in different areas, we still have this lighting, these two little lights right here that shine down on your stuff down here. So everything down here is always gonna have just a very gentle light on it, which is very nice at night so you can actually kind of see where things are and not just the actual backlit buttons. That lighting color doesn't change. And then we have LED side lighting, map lighting here as well. Your panoramic roof controls are also lit up as well. No lighting in the sunglass holder, but don't expect that. Now our visor has really bright vanity lights. And then this center glove box, when I open this up, you do have a light in there and it is brighter than it looks on the camera. Now here's a look at the different ambient light colors as we kind of cycle through those and what this looks like when it's really dark in the cabin. And some of you might wonder what it's like with this surround view 360 camera uh, at night and it's pretty dark where I'm sitting. There is some lighting up front and it's picking up quite a bit of light. It does make it grainy, but you can see fairly well. If it's totally dark, you're kind of screwed, but you can still see some behind you as you can see with that. All right, now let's take a look at the headlights and how they actually do. So at my same spot, you've got a pretty good beam pattern. It definitely dips off to the left a little more than some other vehicles, but that can help prevent blinding other drivers. You've got a pretty decent spread. It's not super awesome, and that's maybe why it's an acceptable rating instead of a good rating. Go ahead and hit the fog lights. Those really do a nice job of illuminating right in front of you. Get a little bit of width as well. And then the high beams, straight shoot, those are actually pretty wide. So let's go ahead and actually put these to the test and check out the adaptive function when we turn. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get on a test drive here. So I'm gonna give you uh, a few different things in this test drive. First, I'm gonna tell you some of my impressions, uh, just the driving impressions in general, but if you wanna see more driving impressions, me uh, uh, talking a little more about that, be sure to watch the full review. Uh, we're going to get on a fairly well-lit road, and then we're going to get on some dark roads, test out the adaptive light function, 
and the automatic high beams as well. The adaptive lights, I believe, are just on the platinum trim with these projector LEDs, but the reflector LEDs still score the same level on the IIHS test results. So look ahead, if I turn, 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 you can see the lights move a little bit and then kind of whip back to center. So we'll see how those do in some turns in a little bit. Now right off the bat, this Platinum Explorer has the three liter EcoBoost V6 twin turbo and it is very powerful. Now, kind of like I usually like to do, right away, let's go ahead and get on it. And that gets you up to speed very quick. So, the automatic high beams actually turned on right away, and then the automatic high beams turned off, and we are on a fairly well-lit road, so I'm kind of surprised that they turned on. Some vehicles, are a little more sensitive. If there's really much for street lights, they won't turn on at all. So these ones actually turned on. And the way to turn those off, uh, you can do it on your main screen, or you can do it uh, just by manually turning your high beams on, pushing it forward, and then that'll turn it off. So um, you can do it either way. I wish they had an actual button where you can just turn it off instead of having to turn them on and then turn it off. But like I said, you can go into your screen to do it. Ride comfort in the Explorer is pretty good. However, this Platinum has 21 inch wheels and there are some times where it does feel a little harsh and I think that's because of these big wheels. But this rear wheel drive platform Explorer just drives so well. And this is all wheel drive that we have right here, but it just handles so well compared to some of the other competitors in the class. Just about to our dark road and one thing I notice is the automatic dimming rearview mirror up above. Always nice to see. Of course you can manually flip in other models. The passenger side mirror is not automatic dimming but this driver side mirror is and I love that because that's those are the mirrors that seem to really get me when there's some bright lights behind me. And now we're about to get on our dark road. So those headlights did swivel right there. Let me go ahead and turn the high beams on, automatic high beams. And they are on, high beams on, and they turned off, thankfully, right after that vehicle straightened out. And we'll see if they turn back on. And they did, that was just right away, right off the bat. It's really pretty bright straight up ahead, which is always good. So I'm gonna turn them off, and I wanna see how these cornering lights do, or these adaptive lights, and right away off the bat, I can see they kind of turned up towards where I'm driving. So they do help out in that scenario. At low speeds, I don't think they necessarily do that much going very far, but they did help with that. Now we have just the low beams on, turn the fog lights on, and that really, that really helps. I love driving with my fog lights on just because of the peripheral vision. So look out into the ditch, that side, that side, that's a big difference. Now the high beams are back on and the fog lights turn off when the high beams are on. This Explorer just handles so well. There's not a lot of body lean and for whatever reason, the high beams turned off, just turned back on. They can be a little touchy sometimes, but I'm not sure why this got an acceptable rating instead of a good rating, but these, these headlights are doing a nice job and they turned off even though that car is quite a ways off into the distance. And in my short time so far with this Explorer, I have not had anybody flash me, which is always good. It's just obnoxious when there's bright, blinding, high light. And right there, you just saw again, they turned on and then they turned off for this car. So they've been very responsive. They've been generous. They haven't been last minute uh, turning off or turning off. Now I'm gonna turn them off and we're gonna turn here, corner, and the biggest thing I've noticed with these adapt adaptive lights is that the straight furthest portion of the light is what moves. It's not too much out to the sides, but when you're going higher speeds like that last section, the adaptive function really helped out with that. And just for the fog lights again, fog lights off, fog lights on. Right in front of you is great. Off to the side, it really helps. 
then I turn the automatic high beams on. They only turn on or work at a certain speed and it looked like it was like 32 miles an hour because they're on again and we've got pretty good visibility. I think after driving on this darker road, uh, I didn't really read into the test results on the IIHS, but I think the distance uh, may not be in some of the corners as good as they're hoping for. And I think that's probably the biggest function. But to my eyes, my perception, these are nice. These are very nice. They've done a pretty good job. They don't seem to be quite as nice as that Lincoln Navigator that we had recently. Uh, but they're still doing a great job. I think a, I think most of you are going to be very happy with these, especially if you're coming from an older vehicle or vehicle with halogen lights. You can see right there, the low beams distance isn't that great. Uh, they are very bright, but they just don't seem to reach quite as far. Now I've got just the low beams on. Get a couple corners. And I can see a little bit of the function, but it's still pretty dark further off into that corner. And if I turn the wheel enough, it's almost like they're a little bit delayed with the adaptive function. So the adaptive function is nice, but it's not a deal breaker. I wouldn't buy this vehicle just to get the adaptive function. High beams on, I just turned the automatic ones on to see if it would work with that car, and it did. It turned them back off almost right away, but theirs are pretty bright. high beams back on. So, so far, really responsive. Now I've got to tell all of you, the biggest thing about this Platinum Explorer is it's really, it's pretty much loaded and this powertrain is fantastic. I mean, this is like a luxury car powertrain, this kind of power. It's not S, uh, Explorer ST numbers, but this will put you back in your seat. It is very responsive. The 10 speed transmission just gets through its gears. The turbo here is just just great. And it, so it handles so well. So you'll definitely want to check out that full review if you want to learn more about other trims. Uh, daytime review and I go through all of the creature comforts, features, and a longer test drive. So be sure to check that out. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to check out some other night reviews. Check out these videos down below. Subscribe for videos like this, pros and con videos, and long detailed reviews every single week. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in.